afternoon, BC. How are you this afternoon? I'm good. I'm, I'm really absolutely excited. Yes. Uh, we have had a wonderful graduation ceremony yes. where we had uh, the Honorable Justice Malanga receiving his um, honorary degree, Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Yes, yes. So now, because it is such an auspicious occasion where you had two justices over the past two days sure. and starting with Justice Matanga. Yeah. Just tell us the reasoning behind honoring Justice Matanga. That is very important and uh, I must start by indicating that uh, Justice Matlanga um, is a jurist who has had um, a, a distinguished career on the bench and he has penned some of the groundbreaking judgments which uh, will have a huge influence going forward. So he's an outstanding judge and he has had an outstanding career uh, on the bench and we are absolutely delighted uh, that we were able to approach him. But more than that, he embodies values and attributes that we would like uh, young people uh, who are graduates of Rhodes University and beyond, we want them to embrace those. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I should also indicate another consideration is that he is a passionate advocate of judicial education. And you heard in the citation uh, how much he has contributed in that regard. And he remains engaged with the scholarship. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something his address today was absolutely amazing. He really touched on something that is very close to my heart, the issues of gender-based violence. You see, in 1994, we had the dawn of democracy. We had freedom. When one reflects about the experience of women in this country, you can then start to ask what kind of freedom do we lay claim to? when that very significant part of our society remains imprisoned. Imprisoned in fear, fear of being uh, assaulted, uh, fear of being raped, mm. and fear of being killed. Mm. So much as we can celebrate every year on the 27th of uh, April, celebrating the freedom that uh, dawned on the 27th, but what he did was to remind us that women of this country remain imprisoned. And by and large, it is us men who um, continue to imprison the women. But there's another thing which was really, really important that he mentioned. You see, when we think of gender-based violence, we always think of someone physically assaulting a woman raping a woman and doing all manner of harm. But what he said was that to the extent that we do not stand up and speak out against gender-based violence, we are complicit. And so you can't go around knocking on your chest and saying, I'm a good person, I haven't hit a woman, I haven't. But some of the things that you say are just as bad as uh, physical assault. So it was really an important uh, address which every person in this country has to listen to. Absolutely. We must bring an end to gender-based violence. We must make sure that the women of this country can walk freely without fearing mm -hmm. that uh, they might be assaulted, raped, or killed. But particularly, I think the other thing that he mentioned, which I think is also important, we always think of gender-based violence as being perpetrated by a stranger uh, on, on, on a woman. More often than not, it's perpetrated by someone who proclaims to love that person, a, a close family member, or more often than not, uh, those who, us who say, well, I love you. And yet we, we really commit some of the most uh, horrendous uh, offenses of gender-based violence. So we should not, none of us 
should go about saying, I haven't committed any gender-based violence. To the extent that you have not spoken out against it, to the extent that you have not raised your voice, when your neighbor, your brother, your relative is committing that offense, you are as guilty mm -hmm. as a person who commits that offense because you have been complicit. Mm -hmm. Wow, VC, um, a mouthful indeed. Um, I'd like to talk to another factor related sure. to uh, women and the struggles that they face in this country. And I'm particularly um, focusing on a statistic that you read out, particularly in relation to the students that are graduating yeah. at Vetsi University, um, putting women ahead yeah. in terms of the numbers of women that are graduating yeah. in this graduation season. Yeah. Now, I want to talk to and relate this to the empowerment of women yeah. and what we are doing as society or what the VC things should be done for women to be empowered so that they can get out of the situation of oppression. Well, the, the, the first thing is we should disabuse ourselves of this notion that we have to, have to do something for them. Yes. I think the most important thing <laughs> is to get out of their way yes. and let them continue mm. and they can achieve. It's just us who trip them mm -hmm. and it's us who place them in circumstances where they are not able to realize their full potential. So the first thing is Let's just make sure that we treat them fairly and equally mm -hmm. and that we don't stand on their way mm -hmm. and create barriers for them to fully realize their potential. So that, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, the second thing is that we must make sure that they have opportunities and that we acknowledge that there are other important things that women uh, have to contribute in our society, there are times when they have to take time off to raise their families. We must acknowledge all of that and, and support them uh, because uh, we, 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 they sometimes fall behind mm -hmm. because they have to also uh, raise their families. Wow. So that, that is important. Of course, the other thing is let's just be decent people. Let's just respect them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't accord them any special treatment, just treat them with basic respect. Um, we are delighted that 64% of the graduating students are women. It's something that we, we celebrate yes. because not so long ago, women were not al allowed to have access to education, much less higher education. Uh, and so we have made huge strides uh, to get women into education. Uh, and now they need to occupy the higher rungs of, in our society. We want them to be anything that they would like to be. We, I would love to have a woman who is a president in this country. Um, as we celebrate the tremendous achievement of women, we should not neglect the young men of this country. Yes. Uh, because from a, a sociological point of view, when they feel alienated, that also contributes to gender-based violence because uh, one does not want to rationalize uh, gender-based violence, but there are instances when they feel alienated and neglected by the society. Mm -hmm. So we do want them to continue to succeed and let everyone be the best that they can be. Wow. Now, VC, as we move on, the university has just been honored to be graced by two justices over a period of two days in the yes. same graduation ceremony. Yeah. Can you just tell us briefly about uh, Chief Justice Zondo's conference of a degree and, of course, the rationale behind it? Well, we discussed that yesterday and uh, Judge Zondo is someone who is uh, an outstanding judge and has contributed immensely uh, in the jurisprudence of this country. He is someone who defied poverty and deprivation and rose right to the highest level mm -hmm. uh, of, our, our, of our courts in this country. That is something that we, we admire. Mm -hmm. uh, we admire his humility, his uh, moral courage, uh, we, we admire his credibility as a person and, uh, uh, and his leadership. 
Uh, so those are some of the main attributes that we, we really admire about him. I must indicate that it, it's something truly special for our university to honor two sitting uh, justices. justices of the Constitutional Court. But there's an important message there. This university supports the judiciary. We will defend them at every turn and let no one think that they can abuse them because no one will speak out. Rhodes University stands firmly behind our judiciary and in fact over the past uh, few years, they have acquitted themselves admirably in the face of uh, incredible pressure. Uh, and so we appreciate their independence and in some instances, they make decisions which make people feel unhappy. Uh, and that is important. That independence is important. So the, the whole country and the world needs to know that Rhodes University believes in the Constitution. Rhodes University believes in the supremacy of the Constitution and in the constitutional dispensation and the powerful role that uh, our judiciary is playing to consolidate, to deepen this constitutional democracy. Yeah. Yeah, Prof. Thank you very much. Just a message now to all the learners that are graduating this season. Um, what would you like to say to them? Well, the most important thing, first they must, particularly the South Africans, must realize that this is their country, that they have an important role to play in ensuring that, it's get, it, that it gets back on track. Uh, as I indicated in my address, uh, we, we, we have lost our way. Um, and it is important for young people to start to play a role because they might feel that there is nothing that they can do. I indicated that the, you know, the general citizens, ordinary citizens of the country, are very important uh, in consolidating and deepening this democracy. And young people in particular must place their knowledge, their skills, their talents at the service of our society so that we can indeed build the kind of a society that we had envisioned uh, when we prosecuted the struggle against the apartheid system. It's very important that we do that. We have no other choice. We don't have a second passport. We can't say there's somewhere where we can go. We must build this country. We must bequeath future generations a better country, a better society that works, that works for everyone, a place where as our constitution uh, indicates, and it really enjoins us in its preamble mm -hmm. that we must free the potential of every person in this country. I have deep faith in young people of this country, in every citizen of this country, that we can indeed, working together, we can build the country of our dreams and that future generations can look back and say, when we veered uh, from our original plan, there were people who were able to stand up and pull us back so that we can get back on course in building this country. You know, this country has incredible resources. There is enough for everyone. Uh, but because of greed and corruption and all of those things, we have people who are unemployed, mm. we have poor people, uh, we have people who have no hope, who really despair. We can't afford that. This is our country, we need to build it. And so that is my message to young people. Do not look on the right, do not look on the left. Take it upon yourself to provide leadership. And wherever you are, you don't have to operate at a national level. In your own locality, make sure that you make a contribution. There's a beautiful uh, Chinese uh, adage, 
which says it's better to light a candle than to cast darkness. So we can all complain about the situation as it is, but we all have an important role to play. If each one of us were to light a candle wherever we are, before long, this country will be a scintillating success. Wow. Prof, thank you very much. A very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was uh, Vice Chancellor Sizwe Mabizela for Rhodes University. I am Judah Malepe for MDN News. Remember, you do not have another passport. We only have one South Africa. An inspirational message from the Vice Chancellor. Thank you very much.